join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. We have no scheduled visitors this evening. However, however Aiden Jibo is here observing us tonight, so everyone please behave. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. S on to the approval of the minutes. Did anyone have any questions first on the warrant that was circulated? All right, then we'll look for a motion on the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for October 22nd. Second. Made and seconded. Any corrections or additions? I just would resell uh, October at the beginning. Yes, nothing there. And the only thing I had, Joan, was on line three of page one, uh, proposal and information sheet and 6B succession planning, not on 6B. And 6B. Yep. Anything else? Motion on the floor. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Minutes are approved. Moving on to business. First business item is the sewer rate discussion. So we have talked about this a number of times, um, and I'm wondering, Matt, not to put the discussion. Um, not specifically, but I could state that obviously there are significant changes coming to our uh, wastewater treatment plant in the future. I think it would be beneficial to the city in the long run to, if we are going to have a rate increase, that it be put into a um, capital improvement fund. Uh, I think in the long term, when we get into whatever work we'll need to do at the McDonough pump station and or the wastewater treatment plant, it will benefit the city to have to be able to come uh, with some funds to whatever that financing proposal looks like. Um, additionally, on the short term, although um, you know, I think Rick does a, a good job of keeping everything pulled together down there, but I do recall at the end of last year, he had a $10,000 auger replacement that we had to, you know, roll into, you know, into July 1 uh, with the new budget. So I think that there are things that, ha if we have the funding in place and, and it is set aside for capital improvements, that he can continue to kind of um, coax us along until we get a long-term decision down there. Great. So the number that was originally proposed was a, I believe, 41% increase at $150 per quarter. And uh, so I'm certainly open to some discussion on what that rate might be that would take effect in January that it gives us time to let everyone know that it's coming the sooner we act on it. Did we do any kind of a comparison with other communities in terms of sewer rates? We discussed it. But we did discuss it. I think the problem is that it's... So I think Middlebury, as an example, I believe this to be true, that it's based on, on usage, water inbound, and then there's a, a formula bill that sets it coming out. And when we were talking with Virgen's Panton, they, they, they right. didn't feel that we had the ability to have accurate so monitoring. Apples apples. That's correct. Yep. Right. You know, there was some... I have a question? Sure. Um, I, is, I don't have the audit with me, but I think there's 195000 in the sewer budget uh, set aside. Is that is that a correct? That is amount? correct. I'm sorry, Lynn. That's correct. That's for biosolids removal. So one of the examples that we had used previously of where we could spend money immediately is uh, the lagoons have to be, the solids have to be taken out of the lagoons. Uh, but we do have $195,000 available for that project. Is that every four years or five years? I'm not sure when the last time it was done. I think it's been rolled um, yeah. several opportunities yeah. uh, worth, Bill. Um, you get a sense of what that cost relative to It's more, it's, it's over $200,000. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I think there's a set aside of like 40000 a year for yep. five right. years or something. Yeah. Yep. And Rick is desperate to have that done. Yeah. He was especially concerned during the last heavy rains. They had to do some 
playing around with the levels in the lagoons. So. Well, at least that money's there. That's that right. is correct. That is. However, yeah, once, once we complete we, that amount of money, then it, well, it's we gone. Start it again. Yeah, it's just right. always every year we put aside that much because right. we know in five years we have to do it again. But no contribution to a capital improvement no. account of any kind. Okay, so I was wondering, knowing that, would um, would it make sense to do the sewer rate at 125 and give the, a little bit of a break to everybody while we get used to that and then go to the 150 maybe a year, a year and a half, or two years down the road? Is that going to create enough money? I mean, you can't fund the whole thing in one year. No, certainly no. Certainly not, Lynn. I, so the 150 was going to raise about $290,000 annually, uh, which is, I think it's a significant step in the right direction. And, you know, the reason that I pushed this conversation to November was, you know, I think we need to let our consumers know that the rate increase is coming. Um, and I, I think that's good guidance, Lynn. I think you know, if we step it at 125 and then get it to, you know, 150, you know, within the next year, I think that's, I think that's, that's a good way to go. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. What I don't want us to do is what we did the last time we raised rates, which was raise them and then turned around again in six or seven months and had to adjust them again. So I think if we move forward with a very clear plan and, you know, maybe determine what kind of commitment we can make to that 125 you know the, well, I'd like to make that a motion of 125 and a review in uh, 18 months is there a second I'll second great thank you seconded. Lowell did <clears throat> and that that would be effective January 1 correct the next bill I'm assuming so yeah yes. the next billing cycle next yep. billing cycle yep could we amend that to make it 12 now do. I don't want to push it out 18. I'd rather, if we're going to do this, I'd like to let the consumers know that it's 125 starting January 1st of 2020, and then more than likely we will be bumping it to 150 in 2021 to give them that one year knowledge, um, but something in the language saying subject to potential changes, but just to let you know, this is a one-year change and there will be another increase of some amount, probably 25, the next year. Just to clarify, the year a year or 18-month review, would that mean that the discussion would happen a year from when we implement, or the a rate potential rate change would happen a year or 18 months from when we implement? I would think that uh, we would change the rate, let them know we're going to 150. Um, I think 12 months is a little short only because we don't know what the tax rate is going to be too. You know, we're hitting them at every angle and we're not going to have enough money for the long term anyway. So we're going to have to eventually have a bond, but this will start our bond. Mm -hmm. Cor um, correct. I, well, it's 240000 instead of two ninety, so it's only right. 50000 less, so it's a decent chunk of money. Correct. And so we'd be looking at a rate increase July 1, 2020, and another potentially or January, January 1, 2020, yep. and July 1, 2021. Correct. Okay. Right. Based, based on Lynn's proposal. So right. I would not do the amendment then. Never mind. Okay. David? I'm good. <clears throat> Any further discussion? We have a motion on the floor. I just think it's important that we have that we <clears throat> communicate to the public why we're doing this. You know, they know we have problems, mm -hmm. but I think we just need to make sure that, you know, this is in the best interest of the community. Agreed. Joan, I'll work with you before the next billing cycle that we can put an insert in. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Basin Task Force Committee opening. So we've received uh, two resignations from the Basin Task Force. Uh, both Tim's, Tim uh, Cook and Tim Cowan, have stepped down. Uh, Alderman Austin has been uh, working to secure replacements 
And any update there, David? Correct. Um, I, have, uh, I have two individuals that, um, <coughs> that have expressed interest. I have a, a uh, um, one of them uh, would agree to be appointed, uh, Gregory Cousineau. Who, um, who lives here in Virgins, grew up in the area, avid fisherman, outdoorsman, uh, cares about the basin. Um, and uh, Ashley Robinson, who, uh, who I'm going to be back in contact with as well. She, she was, she's attended a couple of meetings. Yeah, she's come yeah. to a couple of meetings. Um, but Gregory at this point has agreed if, if, uh, if we would appoint him, he would be happy to serve on that committee. I've given him a copy of the document to review. Are you playing for a one-year position, or is it annual renewal, or is it a term? I don't know if there is a term. There isn't a term. There isn't a it's term. July. It's really just until we and come annual. up with something yeah. and then pass it on to the council for right. implementation. Yeah. All right. Do we have a motion? I'd make a motion to appoint Gregory Kuzno to the Otter Creek Basin Task Force Committee. Second. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Charter change review. <coughs> Alderman Koenig, would you like to lead this discussion? Can <laughs> yeah. you read all that to us right now so we yeah. can just make sure we understand it? I no, did. The one, the one difference that's in there that was out uh, in the ether was whether or not we needed a TIF. Uh, I talked to Diane Lamper, who connected me as somebody in Montpelier, who connected me as somebody in Montpelier, who said, I don't think so, but I'm going to talk to people who actually positively know later in the week, and I'll get back to you. And surprisingly, she got back to me and said, no. Winooski's is a really strange. They, they got a TIF before there was TIF. That's why it's in there. Uh, and now there is legislation that exists that covers it, so you don't need it. Okay. So theirs only exists because of an oddity of time. So I, did I, take your, I did take your advice and read from the back forward. That was great. Thank you. Did anyone else have any other comments on? Well, it looks like we went, you went with that three-year term. I kept it there. I figured we can talk about it. Yeah, okay. doesn't. I just, it seemed like having just a third of us leaving at any given time was more stable, but we've also been doing fine <coughs> in half, too, so it doesn't matter. I just, it was an idea. If during public comment, we're like, yeah, not so much. Then we take it out. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a great issue for public comment. Yeah. All right, very well then. Joan, so our next step is to file this with you. Is that correct? No, we have to schedule public hearings. And, but don't we have to file with you first before public hearings? Well, yeah, the document the that document. we're going to work on, yes. Right, and so then schedule the public hearings. So that it's available for public right. review okay. in my office. Great. Put it on the website. Right. So do we need a motion to move forward with this? I don't or think Or are we just going to, we, we just, just need schedule to schedule a meeting? public hearings and okay. keep moving. Very well, then that means a public hearing, a public hearing date. <laughs> How are you going to advertise that? Well, we can do it on the Front Porch Forum, put something on Facebook, put it on our web page, put a <clears throat> ad in, we could put a notice in the newspaper. We have to put a right. notice for the public hearings, and it'll be posted in five places in town. Yeah. Okay. And we can Andy all. And Andy will and cover Andy, it. Andy will <laughs> cover it. <laughs> Shall we then schedule our first hearing? Sure. And and we can do that in conjunction with the council meeting, can't we? Yes. And we only have one next month. Is that correct? Or do we have two next month? Uh, we only December, have one. December we month. have one. The seventeenth. Right. I guess the only question would be whether or not this is actually going to generate interest. If there are people who want to discuss it, then this probably is the best venue to do it. If we have yeah, start our public. Right. 
I we can. I would say upstairs. Yeah. We can't get upstairs on Tuesdays. Fire station. And certainly ask you. Okay. I'm sure it's not a problem. Okay. Yeah. So the 17th. <clears throat> and we'll just move the council meeting to the fire station. Okay. And do you want the public hearing at 5:30 or 6? Uh, let's do it at 6. Yeah, we usually have them at 6. Does that work for you, Lynn? That's fine. Okay. So we'll just start a regular meeting at 5.30, right. have the hearing at 6, and then go back to business? Right. right. And that allows people in Burlington to get here by 6. Great. Mark, thank you for all your work on this. Sure. It's pretty exciting stuff. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time to review it, too. Very well, then. Moving on to the issue of the VLCT self-governance resolution. You all received a copy of the resolution in your packet, and I will uh, read it now. Resolution for support for VLCT's initiative on self-governance. Whereas the city of Virgins is an active member of the M Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and whereas the city of Virgins serves as the municipal hub to five towns in northern Addison County, Vermont, and whereas decisions that affect the city of Virgins and its neighboring communities are largely made in the state capital of Montpelier, and whereas the decisions that are made in Montpelier affect all communities in the state with little recourse to refine said decisions to align with local needs, and whereas the Vermont League of Cities and Towns seeks to support decision-making at the local level, including allowing municipalities to adopt local fees and taxes, and whereas the Vermont League of Cities and Towns supports full implementation of municipal government, governance, charter provisions, following adoption by local voters, and whereas the Vermont League of Cities and Towns seeks a home rule amendment to the Vermont Constitution. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and City Council of the City of Virgins, we hereby support the Vermont League of Cities and Towns in its work with the Vermont State Legislature to embrace and enact municipal governance for communities across the state. Adopted this 12th day of November, 2019. I will circulate this for everyone's signature. <clears throat> and while that is circulating, we'll move on to the Jeremy Haight Diabetes Awareness Fishing Tournament. So uh, I was contacted by Mr. Bob Miles. Uh, Mr. Miles is asking the city's permission to have a uh, fundraiser on behalf of Jeremy Height, who uh, lost his life unexpectedly. Um, this is not um, replacing the Junior Fishing Derby. This is a separate event. Um, and the proceeds to the event are really to support um, Jeremy's two uh, young sons. Um, I, I would have to say, in, in many ways, it's very similar uh, to the Junior Fishing Derby, but this is a specific event. Um, request. Is there a May 30th from 8 to 3 down at the falls. And what do they require of us? Any uh, we would need needs? a, Joan, do we need a permit, a gathering? A public assembly. Public yeah. assembly's permit, um, which we can execute. I'm just seeking permission from the council to allow the event to take place down in the falls. When is the yeah, like, closer to Father's Day. The yeah. only thing I worry about then is the water might be too high. If, there's, yeah. if there might be, who makes the decision as whether or not you do it or you don't it'd be, do it? It'd be the same as last year. I mean, we had to postpone the, the fishing derby last year because of high water. They just had the issue two weeks ago with the boat race. Um, so that's, it's really the event organizers have been making those calls on their own. And, do they and they would have to have their own insurance? Yes. Any discussion, or are we all nodding in agreement? Okay, thank you Great. all. I'll let Bob know in the morning. Thank you. Perfect. 
second bid for our new boiler. Yeah, so at the request of council, um, I reached out to uh, two other vendors regarding the uh, boiler replacement here at, at the Opera House. Um, Champlain, um, Champlain Valley Plumbing and Heating out of Bristol declined the opportunity to review the project. Mountain Air Systems uh, from Williston uh, did provide us a proposal um, at $108,764 excluding tax. And we had a prior bid from Ryan's, uh, from Tim Ryan at $48,587. Um, so it is, it's, it's a difficult, difficult decision, Bill. Um, so I have two things I'd like to discuss on this. Number one, I'd like the council's approval to please go ahead with the work and have uh, Tim has been holding uh, a schedule for us to be able to get started. Um, the other thing is that the, the half of this project is going to be paid for by uh, the Virgins Opera House, Friends of the Virgins Opera House. Uh, for financing purposes, they have requested um, a similar setup that we did with St. Paul's um, for the Park Street Improvement Project. Uh, they would like to be lent their share uh, in advance and uh, Jerry Ann and I have not gotten into what those terms might look like as of yet. Uh, first, I needed the approval of council to go ahead with the bid so we know what we're talking about money wise. And then Jerry Ann would, uh, and I would put together a, a proposal that would come back to the council on the 22nd for approval. Would that financing be over how long a period of time? Exactly. Oh, don't know yet. Exactly. Okay. You know, they're looking for. Um, you know, for the term to be as long as possible, I'm looking for it to be as short as possible. And you would define not ratio, but dollar amount? <laughs> I would hope that the council would be very clear uh, on that <laughs> when we move forward. Yeah. Um, yes. have water tower to cover? Yes. Uh, I understood from the messages I've been getting through Jerry Ann, because I'm on the liaison between them, they're looking for three to five. Is that what you understand, Matt? That is my understanding, but honestly, Lynn, as you've seen the correspondence, we haven't really, nothing's in stone there. Um, I have, I wanted to get the council's approval to move forward first so we knew what number we were working with. Uh, they are looking for three to five. I'm looking for closer to three. Yeah, I would think three would be appropriate. Yep. Do you need a motion to approve the boiler? I don't believe so. I just, um, I'll just take a verbal. Seems like you go you want to go with the lower, the 48. Okay, okay. That'd be my preference. I don't okay. Know. Do we all agree with that? <laughs> yes. Okay. And then I'll bring um, the Opera House's proposal to the council on the 22nd, um, and we can move forward on that end as well. So thank you all very much. Great. Thank you. It'll be nice to have that done. I agree. City Manager's report. So the highly successful um, summer farmer's market uh, has secured a location downtown. Lulu's will be opening uh, the farmers opening for the farmers market starting on November 23rd. It will be Saturdays from nine to one, and uh, I would just encourage everyone to continue to support the farmers market. Um, they're already excited, I think, as we all are about next summer, especially based on today's weather. Um, so this is just a great um, continuity for this for this event uh, in in downtown. So please do stop by Saturday morning and see them. Great. Uh, city health insurance plan and suggested guidance. So, you know, this, okay, so it's the city manager's responsibility to choose um, the health care plan for the city. And as such, uh, the city is staying with Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, for, the, uh, for the next, for the, 20, the 2020 calendar year. Um, my guidance to the council, uh, based on our budget conversations and the impact of health care cost on the overall operating budget, is that effective immediately, a portion of the health care premiums be paid by employees, new hires. So with the city manager, I would respectfully recommend that we start this shift of away from the city paying 100% of, of, the, of the premiums 
and start to share that cost with our new hires. So city manager would start, city clerk provided there's no turnover before the end of February would be the second individual affected by this new scale. It's not the silver bullet that we want when it comes to um, you know, trying to get, get the budget under control. But, you know, we looked at Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, we looked at um, their gold plan, we looked at their, the MVP plan, there's a new plan called um, Blue Edge uh, through, through Blue Cross Blue Shield, and it really shifts, uh, those plans really shift the uh, deductible burden in a significant way onto employees and that's why I don't feel comfortable you know saying across the board that we should everyone should start paying 10 percent or we should drop uh, to those those other alternative plans um, it's a long-term play I mean it's really you know shifting the cost um, having the employees start to share in that you know if our youngest employee is 24 years old you know it's going to take a while for that to really show up and impact the budget. Uh, but I'm just not comfortable with alternatives to that option. Is that contribution a percentage of the premium? Is it an absolute dollar amount? Is it, is it something that they, that they will put towards their deductible? No, I, I think it's, it's out of pocket expense bill based on the premium, either be a family plan or, um, or individual plan. So the, if the rate for um, sorry, let me get caught up here. I'd like to say the way we do it for school is it's an 80-20 split. So the premium, the, the school covers, the district covers 80 percent, the employee covers 20 percent, and then there's an HRA where we put in X amount. The first, I'm making numbers up, but it's like the first thousand dollars we cover, then they cover the next three thousand, and then we cover anything over that. So. And that's how the, the, school, nice that's how the school does it. Yeah. Is that once you have the percent, if you do dollar amount and right. then it goes up another fifteen yep. percent next year, yep. right? You've just gone from eighty twenty to ninety yep. ten. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So the percentage keeps it within whatever the premium yeah. is. Yeah, I right. think that's a good. I think that's a good idea, Mark. Yeah. Discussion. I I mean I certainly can you know agree where where Matt's coming from here, just making sure that we can maintain employees in continuity and <clears throat> figure out longer term and think longer term about how we're going to save but think to you know we've we've discussed it making a change on current employees is essentially a cut in pay and right now in this time we need continuity in this office and in the city in general so anybody else yeah i think unless we're going to try and even it out by raising the salaries you know, that kind of has been our standard line is that we give good benefits in exchange for okay salaries and if we keep okay salaries and cut benefits we're going to have a lot of people leave i mean I, the, the the council's going to have to be cognizant of that going forward Mark. And if you know if we struggle finding a city manager because or if we struggle finding a clerk thinking, because yeah. um you know the council's going to have to weigh that conversation i mean do we do you have to bump pay up commensurately to, to except to, if you look in the real world nobody gets 100 percent. no coverage. not anymore it's no. true no, so so it's, it would be part of the negotiation of the package yep of, of any employee i think that long term we may you know we we have a significant amount of exposure in virtually no control over these costs and that impacted this last budget significantly um in the long-term discussion i think is is <clears throat> you know how we structure things and it may be a situation where we make pay commensurate with what it should be um we have control over that we don't have any control whatsoever i don't think anybody has any control over what happens with healthcare premiums and, and that's a concern I mean we've really got the worst of both worlds we don't have a free market and we don't have single payer and Montpelier can't seem to get out of their own way to figure it out um, but I think that that's maybe a discussion that we have is you know if we were to um, 
if we were to shift more of the burden to the employees, I, I think it's only fair that that salaries and wages would increase. Um, but that would at least ins that would at least give us some level of control um, where we have none at this point. So just throw that out there. Lynn, you have any comments? No, but I mean, I don't think we're doing anything different than the general um, businesses out there are doing when we changed to 20, 2080. <clears throat> and I think it's a perfect way to do it, what Matt is saying. Keep our, our current employees where they are and any new people come in at 28. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you all. So is that a new thing that's going to start? 80-20, effective when? I want to discuss it with you and Abby in the morning because I just want to make sure that we can get it through VLCT that way. Um, so it'll be effective for... Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. Yeah, so it'll be effective for whoever our next hire is. Okay. Yes. All righty. Moving right along. Thank you all. Uh, included in your packet was a letter from Attorney General T.J. Donovan. Uh, as many people are probably aware, uh, there's a class action suit going against uh, Purdue Pharma and the their owners, the Sackler family. This is a class action suit um, based on opioid um, litigation. And the city of Virgin's um, share of the class action suit, if it's successful, is about $23,000. Um, or we have the opportunity to opt out of the class action, class action suit no later than November 22nd. I believe that uh, the opioid epidemic that is sweeping our nation absolutely is affecting our community as well. And the opportunity to um, take back and reutilize some of the funds that the pharma industry has um, gained based on pushing opioids um, through our through our medical system uh, will benefit the, the community uh, by way of prevention and education. Um, should again the suit um, be successful. Um, this is probably the first of many suits that you'll be seeing on this on this uh, um, issue. So, unless the council guides me otherwise, we will not. I would I would not opt out of participating in the class <coughs> suit. Great. Agreed. Okay. Everybody good there? Yeah. Okay. Lynn. Yes. Thank you. Uh, budget update, so things keep moving along. Um, as Lynn said, you know, not a good start um, to the winter um, materials um, portion of our budget, but again, you know, great job to, um, to the DPW team being out at all hours uh, this morning and getting us ready for um, uh, Tuesday morning. Um, I do want to call to everyone's attention uh, within DPW building um, maintenance. I had increased that line item. Sorry. Uh, we had increased that, that line item to $3,800 this year. Jim had asked for a retrofit of to LED lights. Um, down in the in the shop uh, after the last storm i included this picture in everyone's uh, packet uh, the majority of the roof was actually on the sidewalk and in the middle of the street uh, so jim and his team took immediate action and the roof was actually re replaced by our dpw team for the cost of four thousand dollars uh, that's obviously going to blow that line item um, jim feels that he's going to be okay by the end of the year um, but the reason I call out the recycling shed, again, it's an example of the DPW team saying, you know, we can absorb what we typically would pay, you know, a roofing contractor $13,000, $14,000. Obviously, it is our labor expense, but it really came down to labor and materials on behalf of the city. So 
uh, Matt Crowley really drove that that project for us, and I, I thank and con congratulate M Matt for not only you know being willing to do it, but to start to think, you know, how can we, you know, uh, again protect our our budget as much as possible by internalizing work. Salt shed is going. Just to the left of that, yes. Okay, so you're going to retain that building? The, that building will be retained. Okay, yes. I thought that building was coming down. No, okay. it looks like it should have some time ago. <laughs> um, but now we have a new roof. Okay. What's that? A little paint. Yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, a yes. Paint. So the Job Corps uh, students are, that's actually on their work list for the spring okay. to help us scrape and repaint um, the recycling shed. So, um, you know, we will, it's going to take a little bit to get there, but. Um, that will be new and improved. But again, I just I am calling to everyone's attention that we will be over in the um, building maintenance um, line item. I'm not seeing anything else jump out. Um, police fines have started to trickle in. Um, I, Joan, I, did nothing, we get June? Nothing from the state. Okay. So for June, okay. Yeah. all the way up to last month. Yeah, so Joan is rattling their cage on a, about on a weekly basis because and it's we, all of us yeah. in Madison County here. They are they're under a new um, program there, and I think they had trouble with the merging, and they're duplicating, so they have to sort it all out. It's really a mess for them, but they aren't going to pay us until they get it straightened out on what they owe each town. So. Nobody's gotten them, <laughs> not just us. So I've started to trickle in there. And then if there's any, if anybody has any questions about the budget uh, year to date, I'd be happy to discuss them. Any questions? Everyone's okay? Good. Okay. Good. And I think you actually already spoke about the recycling shed roof. So that yep. was rather. Yeah, that dovetailed all together. Yep. Any other questions for Matt? Great, thank you. I have a couple of items from the mayor's report tonight um, on local option tax. So, Bill, you raised the question last week of a list of pre-approved municipalities for the... Right. Yes. Yep. Well, we haven't really gotten a clear answer on that, yeah. but we are on a list. And what, seems, what it seems to me is we aren't necessarily pre-approved, we are just pre-approved. And it... <laughs> And that we still have to go through the process of revising our charter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So further to that, Mr. Mayor, I do have a call into the Secretary of State's office because we've been similar to Merck's round and round in Montpelier conversations. I've been to VLCT and the Department of Taxes, and everyone's kind of kicking me down the road. So we're just going to take it straight to uh, Secretary of Commerce. Right. So we are working on that, and we have it, of course, included in our charter revisions amendment, rather, so uh, we just keep moving forward. Great. I want to announce that the Succession Planning Committee has scheduled their two first formal formal meetings, uh, the first to be held on November 18th at 7 p.m. at Kennedy Brothers, and everyone is actually welcome if they would like to sit on, in on it, and again on December 2nd at 7 p.m. And to be clear that this is a committee formed to help us with the process of um, turnover here in City Hall in particular, to help us with the plan for the city manager turnover. And uh, they originally were formed to help us with the city clerk. So they've uh, all done some independent work, but we'll be meeting together on the 18th. So anyone here that's interested in going should attend. Um, it's a pretty exciting group. Any questions on that? City manager search, uh, everyone's probably waiting to hear. Uh, we have received, as of today, five applicants. Uh, three are from within the state, two are not in the state. Uh, everyone has a connection somehow or another to New England. Uh, we have the first round of interviews scheduled for this Thursday and Friday. Matt and, or Mark and David Austin will be uh, joining me, and we're going to have 15 to 20 minute interviews with the five candidates. Um, it would be great, actually, if we had five candidates to propose to the full council, but it's our objective to have two or three. Uh, each of them has some kind of municipal experience, uh, which is sort of new for us. We didn't have that necessarily in our last round. And uh, they all seem to have certainly their own qualifications, so it's pretty exciting. 
any questions about that? Do, uh, do you anticipate with that number of applicants any sort of a timetable? Well, hopefully we can make a determination on Friday who we'd like to present to the council. And, and my hope would be that if, if we have two or three applicants that we want to present to the full council, we'll call a special meeting to actually have, an inter have interviews. And the sooner we do that, the better. And Lynn, what is your schedule? Are you, when are you back? 19th. The 19th. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Any other questions? Any other comments? Nothing? Great. Therefore? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All the right storm. Thank you, Thanks, Lynn. Lynn. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Bye.